Hey everyone, Shadow here, and welcome to another Marvel Contest of Champions video. So, I have finished the gauntlet 100%. It took a lot more revives than I had anticipated, and I wanted to talk to you about what I did right and what I did wrong. All right, so let's start with what I did right. So, before I went into the gauntlet, I had a planning session to build my team took us a little over an hour getting the team straight. I used this spreadsheet here by KT1. He created this spreadsheet to help everyone build their team. I'll leave a link in the description below so that you can go and get this spreadsheet. So what I did, uh, it was blank, of course, with the opponents uh, filled in the MVP shortlist and if you look over to the right here, must have answers for, all right? These are crucial. You have to make sure that your team includes someone that can deal with these guys. Otherwise, you can get either roadblocked, meaning you can't continue, no matter how many revives or um, units you spend, or it'll just take you a lot more in terms of revives and resources. All right, so I went through and I came up with this team and then I went over to the left-hand side and mapped out who on this team could take those fights. So going into the gauntlet, I knew who I was going to use for each fight, okay? That is what I did right. Now, what I did wrong, I failed to prepare properly. And so I'm hoping this will be a cautionary tale if you are planning to do the gauntlet. And this applies to any major difficult content. All right. And this is the most difficult content that I have had to deal with uh, so far. And I've done Labyrinth of Legends, but I have not done The Abyss. All right, so what I failed to do was farm health potions. I farmed no health potions. I used only what I had on hand. Now, why that's important, it would have saved me a lot of revives. If you go to the live stream and watch some of the fights, I would just revive no healing and just get them down as much as I could, okay? That meant my revive count was going to be much higher than someone who properly prepared, had health potions, would heal up and, you know, do the fight. A lot of times, you know, I went in with 30% health, you know, whatever uh, health I got from the uh, revive I was using. And that was it. So that was uh, a big oversight on my part. I should have farmed for a couple of weeks before I did the gauntlet, but I did not. Uh, now, I had a lot of revives on hand, and I had gotten the Cavalier uh, bundle at the end of completing Cavalier. I had uh, about 100 revives between, you know, my inventory and the overflow. I showed that in the beginning because I wasn't too worried about running out of revives. I also had a lot of crystals, still do have a lot of crystals that have revives in them. And I didn't use up all my revives, but I did end up using most of them. All right, now, that was uh, mistake number one. The second thing I did was I, even though we laid out these teams, I went in with two champions that I was not well-versed in using. That's a nice way to say I sucked at playing them. I did not 
know how to play with them uh, very well at all. Okay, so the two that I'm talking about are Quake and Professor X. Excellent counters. Folks who know how to use these two champions can go through this gauntlet uh, using very little resources if they are uh, very skilled. I did not know how to use either of them. I knew how to use Quake a little bit better than Professor X, um, but I don't use them. I use them in the arena and that's it. So taking two un you know, unfamiliar champions into content like the gauntlet, not a good idea. So that was my second mistake. All right. So take, for example, um, the Terax fight. Now I didn't do terrible. I think I ended up using three revives on that fight, but the way that I fight Quake is not the way you want to fight Quake, uh, fight with Quake on the uh, gauntlet. I used a parry uh, heavy style, okay? So I would evade, parry, go back to charging up, evade, parry, go back to charging up. The problem with that in this content is that they have high attack values. So you're going to be taking a lot of damage um, on your block. And if you don't have a lot of health potions you're going to end up using a lot more revives. You see how important that was? Uh, because my style was not well con you know, uh, suited for the attack values and not having health potions. Now, I usually run suicides. I don't recommend running suicides for this. You can, but I turned my suicides off when I saw how hard uh, these guys were hitting. And I said, no, uh, that's enough. Uh, I am not going to add to that damage with the suicides, especially since I knew I didn't have a lot of health potions. So I was going to end up using even more revives if I went ahead and stayed with my uh, uh, suicides. All right. So that was another mistake on my part going in there. Uh, with champions that were unfamiliar to me. So uh, something that a lot of people ask, they want to know, you know, would I go in with the same team, you know, if I had to do it again? No, but that's not because the team that I chose was a bad team for this. It was because I'm bad with Quake and uh, Professor X. Uh, one thing I probably would do uh, if I had to do this again, uh, I would probably bring Aegon. One of the reasons I didn't bring Aegon in the first place was because I thought I would have difficulty ramping him up. Uh, but I could have ramped him up on Doom. You know, it would have been worth it to use even 10 revives to ramp him up on Doom. And then we would have been good for uh, the rest of the gauntlet, you know, going through um, the rest of the fights, ramping them up as we could. All right. So that would have been a change that I would have made. I would have gone in with Aegon. I would have ramped him up on Doom and used him in as many fights as I could. Now, there is uh, the Terax fight. Uh, actually, there are two fights that if you see over here in red, Weapon X and Sasquatch, uh, Terax is in orange. He won't stop you if you didn't have a good counter for him, but you'll use a lot of resources if you don't. Quake was a good counter for him. Uh, I don't know many others that would be good counters, but Gladiator Hulk would have been a very good counter for that Terax. Uh, Black Widow Clairvoyant, also a good option if you know how to use her against that fight. And that brings me to another mistake. I believe we're up to mistake number three. Um, the other mistake was I did not do enough research into the fights. I went in blind. I didn't watch anyone else really doing these fights. You know, so... 
you know, for example, I said Black Widow Clairvoyant can do it, right? I never watched a single video of someone using Black Widow Clairvoyant against Terex. Otherwise, I might have chosen her. I'm more familiar with her. And when I actually, after I finished the gauntlet, when I saw the video, I was like, oh, wow, yeah, I could have done that. Um, that that's pretty slick. And I should have done that for each of these fights, but I did not. And so that was another mistake. All of these mistakes were quite costly in terms of revives. Uh, not farming the health potions, I think, was the greatest, but so was bringing in champions that I wasn't familiar with. Because what that meant was that uh, for those who... Uh, I plan to use against a certain, like, uh, Korg. Uh, Professor X can do that Korg fight. Ghost, she can do it, but it's more difficult with um, Ghost. So I went into that fight. I've not ever fought against Korg with Professor X. Ever. That was my first time. And this is not a good place for your first time fighting some of these champions with, you know... Um, new champs to you. So I ended up, once I saw that that wasn't going to work, which cost me a couple of revives, I went with Ghost, who wasn't the best option for it, but we eventually got him down, but it cost a lot more. And that particular thing repeated itself in several fights, where the counter that you see listed there I wasn't really able to use, uh, so I ended up using someone else. Like uh, Dragon Man uh, didn't go so badly because I had Ghost with uh, the Hood Synergy, so I was able to tank some special threes. So that one didn't go so bad, and I'm familiar with Ghost. So didn't, uh, you know, hemorrhage revives uh, on that fight. Um, but in some of the other fights, I did. All right, so... For those of you who have not done the gauntlet and are planning to do the gauntlet, here's some advice. Number one, farm up health potions and get as many revives as you can. Hit the arena. Make sure you have a good amount of units before you enter the gauntlet. Okay, so that's number one. Manage your resources. Make sure you have enough resources to handle the gauntlet. Number two, when you choose your team, do not just pick good counters to the fights. Also, make sure you are familiar with the champions that you are planning to bring. Not just used to fighting with them, but fighting with them in the style that you're going to need to use when you're fighting some of these uh, opponents in the gauntlet, all right? Uh, that was another really big mistake that I made. You know, I might be familiar with fighting a particular champion, but not with the node combinations uh, and the high uh, attack values so that I took a lot of block damage. So number three, do your research, look up videos, see what people are doing, how they're approaching each of the fights. Because if you're going to go in with a counter, you want to see what other people are using, how they're using that particular counter in that fight so that you can then emulate what they've done so that you'll have an easier time, okay? So you definitely want to do your research, all right? Hopefully, this will help you uh, reduce the amount of resources uh, that you're going to need for this content. Uh, I remember when I first went into uh, Realm of Legends, I made a similar mistake. Everyone said that um, Star-Lord was great to use, and he is. The problem was I wasn't comfortable yet with keeping a combo. So your comfort level with the champions, 
that you're going to bring in is huge. If you have a selection of counters that you can bring in, some you're not so good with, some you are good with, you want to go in with the ones that you're good with, that you're comfortable with. Um, there were several fights that Quake could do no problem, but you have to be able to use Quake at a master level. And I wasn't able to use her at a master level, so I had her there, but she wasn't going to do me as good as she would in the hands of a master level Quake player. So these are some things to bear in mind. Uh, definitely talk it out. Seek someone else. That's another piece of advice. Seek someone else who has done this already. Uh, when I was building my team, I had KT, I had Baby Cham. Uh, they came in and recommended that I rank up my Archangel, who was ranked four. And I didn't know anything about the content yet. Didn't know just how difficult it was going to be. And they were like, no, you want to rank up your Archangel. And I said, okay, you know, they have the experience. They're saying this and that's what I'm going to do. And I'm very happy I did. It was a very good piece of advice. So listen to other people when they're giving you advice, when they've already gone through it. Okay. Uh, and that way you can reduce the amount of resources you're going to need to explore the gauntlet. Now, earlier, I talked about my suicide mastery build. I turned off my suicides, but I didn't talk to you about mastery setup. Now, one change that I think would be very, very useful, and it was for me, maxing out Resonate. I also maxed out Resonate. Uh, the Resonate can help with the high block damage and chip damage that you're likely to take. Um, that puts a weakness on them so that they hit you much less. All right. Uh, and you want to put points into block proficiency and all that good stuff as well. All right. So uh, that's something else that you might want to do before you go into the gauntlet. Change your mastery setup. If you don't have Resonate, unlocked, it might be worth it to unlock it for the gauntlet. We're talking about some of the hardest content in the game and the rewards are insane. Okay. So it's worth it. That was one of the um, pieces of advice that I myself received that, you know, I was about to go in there with an underranked champion, but this is content that it's worth it to rank up this champion to do this content, okay? So uh, the other or last piece of advice I would have is don't go in with underranked champions. You know, you wanna go in with champions that you're familiar with, that you're comfortable with, that can do the fights, but you also want them to be at their best. This content is really made for six star rank three champions, uh, obviously, the five-star champions can do it as well. Uh, your skill level will make a difference in how many resources you're going to use, whether you use a five or a six-star champion. But uh, that's something also to keep in mind. This is tough content, so be prepared. You can watch me go through the gauntlet. I'm not very skilled at all. Uh, so uh, if you want to get an idea of what your average Joe can do, you can take a look, um, especially with all the mistakes that I made. All right. Some of the fights went better than others. So you can uh, analyze that uh, as you want. Now, overall, what were my feelings on the gauntlet? Well, if you've watched me for any length of time, you know that I don't like long fights. Part of the reason is that I have ADHD. Um, Having long fights makes it more difficult for me to stay focused. You know, you watch me every day if you do, and you see me do hours of the arena. But if you think about it, the arena is many short fights. I don't have to keep my attention for that long. So doing the gauntlet was a huge sacrifice. But... A lot of the folks watching 
the folks who donated to me, thank you for all of that. Um, it made it far worth it. Uh, if you watch the opening, you know the opening didn't go so well, but we got um, a lot of rank up resources, which is the primary reason I wanted to do the gauntlet. So was it worth it? Yes, it was very worth it. Uh, if I had to do it again, obviously I would go in with a different team. I would have done my research. I would have been um, at least familiar with the fights in terms of seeing the strategy. So I would have strategized a lot more, farmed a lot more, and we could have done this in far fewer revives. I don't remember how many revives I used, but uh, I would not be surprised if it was about 70 or 80. It was a lot. Uh, no units, but I had all those revives, and that's what they're for, to use. And there was an item use on, so win-win, right? Uh, anyway, that is going to do it, guys. Hopefully, this will help you out uh, if you are planning to do the gauntlet. Um, like I said, Aegon is an option. Uh, I would have done that. Uh, but there are other options. I've seen some amazing fighters do this gauntlet. And uh, Professor X, for example, in the right hands, is a beast for the gauntlet. So if you're good with Professor X, if you're good with Quake, if you have an Archangel, bring them. Uh, they are definitely MVPs. All right, so that's going to do it, guys. Thank you all for watching the video. Hopefully it helps you guys out. Leave a comment. Let me know what you thought about this video. And you all have a blessed day.